So my second insight is that short-term memory is limited. So each of us has a limitation to the much to the amount of information that we can possibly process at any given time. Um, and this is called cognitive load. For, uh, for most people, cognitive load is between five and nine items. So our ability to handle information at one time that's new runs between five to nine new items at a time. It's one reason why telephone numbers are um, seven digits long. And with the area code, they're 10 digits long because um, our ability to memorize or to master information um, and to recall it is limited by what we call cognitive load. So there's a w reason why short-term memory is called short-term because it doesn't last there. Another term for short-term memory is working memory because that is where learning takes place. That's where our children are processing the information. I've got this little guy here who's kind of frustrated. A lot of times in our teaching situations in our classes or in our homeschools, we can be asking kids to deal with more new information than what they are capable of handling at any given time. So one of the things I'd ask you is, you know, how are we uh, accommodating our kids in terms of the amount of new information that we're asking them to grapple with during the course of a day? Are we asking them to deal with complex information or new information? Um, and we're overloading them, and that can be leading to frustration in the homeschool. So anytime your kid is resistant, or anytime students um, seem um, exasperated or frustrated, we as parents and teachers, I think, have to ask um, ourselves, OK, wait a minute, am I asking this child to process more information than what he or she's capable at this time? Is there too much? complex information here and it exceeds the cognitive capacity for short-term memory at this time or um, have I just um, asked the kid to handle too much too many new items do uh, let's say on my PowerPoint or or on this homework page whatever you have in front of them is this is there more uh, information is it busy is there um, an excess amount of of learning that we're asking kids to do uh, and maybe we can simplify the lesson or reduce the lesson or slow it down or um, you know not rush through the material so a lot of our resources can uh, expect students to grapple with too much information and if we're not accepting the limitations of our kids uh, short-term memory um, it's really fruitless to continue just to press forward through this information because they're not learning it. If the goal is learning, then we have to make sure that um, we are teaching or creating a context that in such a way supports the ability that kids actually can learn. So there are many ways to define learning. One of them is learning can be defined as knowledge or skill that's stored in long-term memory. So the goal is to move some of this information from short-term memory into long-term memory. We can't move all of it back there, but why we consider information or skills that are in long-term memory um, learned is because we can retrieve it at any time and we don't have to be taxing working memory. So you have your address memorized, right? You know the names of your children. Uh, you know how to drive. Um, all the things uh, that you can multitask, we talk about multitasking. Um, many of the things that we're multitasking are things that are in long-term memory and they're not taxing or draining our working memory. But if we have too much going on when we're multitasking and we're trying to grapple with too many things in our working memory, uh, things we're going to start to drop the ball. We're going to, we are going to have limited limitations just like our students do if we're not paying attention to the capacity that we're asking um, 
kids or ourselves to handle at any given time. So I want to prove this to you, okay? I want to I want to show you and actually give you a bit of a handle on what your own working memory or capacity might be. So I'm going to ask you to memorize these, um, I think I have nine here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yes. Uh, I'm going to give you a few minutes. Memorize these nine numbers. Um, and I'm going to remove them in a couple of minutes. And notice I'm going to kind of chat a little bit while you're trying to memorize these numbers just to illustrate what we often ask kids to do in a learning situation. So see if you can come up with a way to memorize those nine numbers. and. Um, then I'll remove them and I'll give you a chance to jot them down to see what kind of uh, working memory you have, five to nine items that you can grapple with at one time. Okay, I'm going to remove them now. Jot them down. Uh, how many can you recall? Okay, here they are again. How did you do? Put it up in the chat box. Um, Kate, let me know some of the answers you're getting there. I'm just curious if uh, people were able to memorize nine we're number. We're struggling. <laughs> well, and I, I hope basically what I'm trying to do is convince you of, of what we ask kids to do. I mean, I think... Um, my observation in teaching kids in a lot of different contexts is that we are asked, a lot of times we treat as character issues or weaknesses um, that kids should be able to overcome actual limitations of how our brains are designed to work. And so we're asking kids to grapple with too much information. All right, so there's many strategies for then teaching um, in a way that helps to uh, that helps kids to maximize their cognitive load. There's many ways of dealing with the limitation of working memory. So I'm going to show you one right now, and I'm going to give you another set of numbers. And there's actually ten here. I want to ask you to memorize those. No, I think there's nine, sorry. All right, how many people are going to be able to memorize those, right? I can take those away in less than a minute. And are you going to be able to recreate those numbers for me? If you recognize that they were multiples of seven, you're able to because now you have a way of putting all of that information into one box. So let's say you have all this, you have five to nine boxes in your working memory that you can be grappling with uh, new information at any given time. Because you were able to look at those um, nine digits and recognize that they're multiples of seven, beginning with seven, that's all you have to know. You can now hold that in working memory and you can start doing some other things. So one of the things that teachers are taught to do is to chunk information. And the way that you can help kids to chunk information is to teach it in such a way that they understand the relationship between the information that you're giving to kids. So you can't ask, if you're a history teacher, you can't be asking kids to just memorize an, a bunch of facts about and dates uh, and the names of battles, let's say, um, and ask them to, be, to actually learn that information because they don't have a way of connecting that information to other pieces, other factoids that they have. They've got to be able to have these relationships when they store this information in order for it to be in working memory, in order for it to move back into long-term memory and to be able to be retrieved, they have to see these connections. So teaching in a way that kids 
really can master information, takes insight on our part as teachers to think about, okay, I'm, I was an English teacher. How am I going to um, help kids to see how um, various authors develop their themes in these books that we're studying in our English classes. How am I going to make these connections um, so that they are able to uh, recall what we've studied about theme? Can I make it a connection to their own personal life? Can I make an analogy for them? So when I started this webinar, I told you that a lot of good teaching tips would come from the world of sports and in that if we look at how coaches train the best athletes that there's a lot of strategies that coaches use uh, that we as teachers could use. That's an analogy that helps you to start kind of um, clumping some of these insights that I'm going to give you today together into one category so that you create some kind of unified whole that allows you to remember what we talk about today. You're not going to be able to remember these seven points um, if you don't. If I don't help you make connections and analogies, one way of doing that, relationships such as uh, these are all multiples of seven, help you to uh, chunk things in short-term memory.